Candace was the one, I did say it on Sunday, but it did make the recap. Candace was the one that says, sin in detail, you apologize in detail. So thank you, Candace, for that wisdom. Um, so we're talking tonight about a man by the name of Jephthah. Okay, that's the only way I'm going to be able to say his name because it's weird. Let's go in our Bibles to Hebrews 11.32. You can look at it on the screens if you can't get there fast enough. Hebrews 11.32, look what it says. What more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and... Dun, 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 dun. Je- <laughs> How would y'all say that? Jephthah. So, so I'm saying it, Jeff. Jeff the. Everyone say Jeff the. Jeff the. Isn't that so strange? All right, so we're learning about him tonight. Why am I learning about him? Because the Bible says that through faith and patience, we need to follow those who have already walked by faith. Well, Hebrews 11 is full of all of the men from the Old Testament that walked by faith. They trusted God. What is walking by faith? It's believing, speaking, and doing. So I want to follow people who believed and trusted in God, who spoke it out of their mouth, saw themselves doing it, and then began to do it. I want to follow those people. Why do I want to follow those people? Because they had some major results in their life. I don't know about you, but I want results in my life. I was talking to um, one of the interns, and she had talked to another woman, and she had gone to the salon, and she had spent like four hours at the salon. She left, and her hair looked the exact same. Like the color like didn't stick or they didn't use the right color or something happened. She looked the exact same and guess what? What? They charged her. (laughs) She had to pay for it. She didn't get any results. I don't want that kind of life as a believer. I want results that Jesus died for me to walk in. Well, what is it going to take for me to get results? I have to walk by faith. I have to believe the word, speak the word. Everyone together, what is faith? It is believing. Good job. So we're talking about Jephthah. (laughs) Jephthah. Let's go in our Bibles. We're going to look at his story. What do I need to know about Jephthah? Let's go to Judges. A lot of these people are from Judges that made it back in Hebrews, which I think is awesome. Judges 11. Judges 11, yes, it's the one on the screen. You can look on the screen or you can get there in your Bible. Judges 11. Now, before I read this verse, I want to give you a little backstory of Jephthah, okay? This is his story. Are y'all ready for his story? Once upon a time, long, long ago, just kidding. It really was once upon a time, but it really was true. And it was a really long time ago. There was this um, man who had um, a couple of kids with his, um, with his wife or his whatever, one of, them, one of those women that were with him. With his wife, he had a couple of kids. Well, then he, he got with another woman and had Jephthah. And she got pregnant with Jephthah. Okay, do we understand the story? So now Jephthah is a stepbrother or a half-brother. He's not full. They have the same dad, but they don't have the same mom. Any of you like that? You have siblings that you have the same dad or the same mom, but not the same. Anybody have that? You have the same mom, but different dads. Okay. So this was Jephthah. We're in good company, right? This is kind of what we've seen here. So Jephthah, he's in the Bible. We're supposed to follow him. Listen to his story. He had half brothers. He had a different mom and his mom wasn't like a very great woman. And so the half brothers were like really mean to him. They said, you don't even belong in this family. You're worthless. You're no good. They rejected him. They even kicked him out of their home. They said, you cannot even be here anymore. We don't want you here. And so Jephthah, he left. He went and he found himself um, to be a part of this gang, literally, of violent people. They would do these violent, violent crimes. They They were not good people but they accepted him. But all the while, he knew about God. His dad had taught him about God. And so he knew there was a God, and he knew that God was good, but see, his brothers rejected him. How many of y'all have ever been rejected? Please know that whenever man and woman, mom and dad, friends, brothers, sisters reject you, God will never 
reject you. Do you understand? So Jephthah, the whole while, you know, he's doing all these things. He became very mighty. He was, he was well known. Like he was like the best of the worst. Do you know what I mean? Like he was strong. He was mighty. He was bad to the bone. Everyone was freaked out by him. So it came a time when enemy armies were attacking his, his family's tribe. Now remember, he got kicked out. But his family's tribe was being attacked by, I believe it was the Ammon, Ammonites. And so since the family's tribe was being attacked, they knew that Jephthah was mighty. And so guess what they did? Okay. Called him. Hey, bro. <laughs> brother, you're so awesome, brother. Brother, brother, brother. Come back and fight these people, right? He was like, just come back over here. Now, Jephthah had a decision to make. These people rejected me. So I can stay over here and be mad and upset, or I can honor God. He knew that this tribe was a tribe that belonged to God, and those were enemy armies. And so guess what he did? He said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for God. And so he began to come back. He was a mighty warrior. He said, I'm going to fight off these enemies. And he was going to be able to do it because he was a mighty warrior. But look what happened before he even went and fought. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord. What do I need to know about Jephthah? He made a vow to the Lord, or he made a promise. He said, I'm going to do this. He said, if you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hands, then it will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the people of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. This was the vow, or the promise that Jephthah made to the Lord. Lord, please deliver them into my hands. And if you deliver them into my hands, then whatever comes out of my house first, I will give back to you. This is a pretty intense promise, right? This is pretty intense that Jephthah said, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Now, I want you to go down. I'm going to find it because I did not give it to them, and I apologize. 11.32. Um, let me go down. Let me find it. All right, verse 34. So listen, when Jephthah came to his house, he already defeated the armies. There was his daughter. Y'all, his daughter was the first one. See, back then at the, at, on the first floor, that's where all the animals were. And on the second floor, that's where all of the people lived. So his family would be living on the, on the top floor. The animals would be on the bottom floor. So when he made the vow, he's thinking... Well, uh, you know, a pig's going to run out or a chicken's going to run out or one of the goats is going to run out. And as soon as it runs out and it sees me, then I will offer it up as a sacrifice to the Lord in honor of my vow. But see, what happened was instead of an animal running out of the doors, it was his daughter. His daughter came out and Jephthah ripped his clothes, the Bible says, threw dirt on his head. He was so upset. That's how the Jews, they're very emotional. They were so upset. He threw all this and he was like, Why? Why did you do this? I made a vow to the Lord. And I want you to listen to what Jephthah's daughter said. She said, if you made a vow to the Lord, then I don't want to be a part of you not doing it. So this was going to mean that Jephthah, just like Hannah and Samuel, Jephthah wasn't going to sacrifice his daughter. That was not allowed, right? That goes against God. But he was going to have to give her to the temple. Just like Hannah gave Samuel for the service of the temple. So this meant she's never going to get married. She can never come out of the temple. All she does for the rest of her life is serve in the temple. This is what that meant. Y'all, this is a pretty intense vow. He was never going to see his daughter as his daughter ever again. But he made a vow to the Lord. And so she said, okay, I'll do it. Let me do my two months. It was bemoaning is what they call it. She would go off to all of her family members and say goodbye. Tell them she loves them and tell them, if you want to see me, I'll be at the temple, right? So she went. So Jephthah made a vow and he kept his word. This is what I need to know about Jephthah. He made a vow and he kept his word. See, so many times in our world, we say we're going to do something and we don't follow through. Maybe we change our mind or, or something comes up. But see, if I say I'm going to do something, then I need to do it. Well, something came up. 
You need to be a man or a woman of your word. And if something does come up, then you need to say, hey, something came up and I didn't prioritize what I said I was going to do with you. I prioritized what came up. Because the truth of the matter is, if, if what I have is my words, and my words create my character and my integrity. And so if I say I'm going to do something, if I tell my mom, yeah, I'm going to clean my room, and I don't do it, that's not good. Right. See, I can't be trusted. See, Jephthah, what happened? He made a vow to the Lord, and he did it. And don't you know, that was hard. Yeah. You know, that wasn't super easy to give away his daughter, to say, daughter, I'm never going to see you again. But he did it. So what do I need to do? Look in your Bibles at Deuteronomy 21, 23. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it. God, I'm, I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast sweets. And then five minutes later, you're eating a sucker. What did you just do? You didn't keep your word. See, I need to, I need to train myself to keep my word. Y'all, because here's the thing. Our God never goes back on his word. What he said he, he would do, he's going to do. And so I can't allow myself to get off the hook. Well, how do I keep my word? I do it by faith. Because in my own natural ability, like I'll flake out, I'll be fickle, I'll make excuses, I'll say, well, something came up, or I'll, I'll, I'll say something maybe because that's what someone wants me to hear, wants to hear, but then I'll go back and change it. In my own self, I will be fickle. I'll go against my word. But by faith, when I have the Holy Spirit, then guess what? I won't make a promise I can't keep. If someone comes and tells me, hey, hey, I want you to come to this birthday party, I'm, I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to look at my schedule and I'm going to see if I can. I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, I'll be there. And then go home and your mom's like, no, you're not going to be there. And then you have to make up a story. No, I'm going to be a person of my word. I want to say what needs to be said and I want to follow through. Because here's the thing, y'all. Whenever you get older and your boss says, hey, you need to be at work at 9 o'clock and you're not at work until 9.15 every day, guess what? Bye. Get another job. You know, right now your parents love you. They're not going to kick you out of the house for not keeping your word. But man, we can't create habits of saying something and not doing it. We have to say, you know what, God, I, I said that I was going to read the word every single day. And I want to be a person of my word. So I'm going to read the word every single day. Well, I've got other activities. No, I'm going to be a person of my word. Look what else it says. What do I do? I keep my word. Matthew 5:37 says, let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. I can't just say stuff. I must be a person of my word. Y'all, Jephthah made a vow to the Lord, and it wasn't an easy vow. You know, it's easy for you to clean your room whenever you say you're going to do it. It's easy for you to read the word. Y'all, he literally had to give his daughter over to the service of the Lord and never see her anymore as daughter. He had to do that. Why did he do that? Because he's a man of integrity. Yeah. Who in Kids Club can tell me what integrity means? Peyton. Doing what you don't really want to do? Who else? Allie? Doing the right thing when no one's watching. Yeah. See, I want to be a person of integrity. If I said that I'm going to come to your party and, and I'm not really going to be able to, I've got to go back to you and say, you know what? I lied. Please forgive me. I'm not going to be able to come to your party. I'm not going to say, well, my mom said I couldn't. No, I lied. I said something that I could not follow through. And so then when I get out of the habit of just saying stuff that I don't mean, then I begin to ask the Holy Spirit. And this is living by faith. Holy Spirit, should I do this? Should I play soccer? I don't want to commit to the soccer team and then five days in, quit. I want to be a person of my word. I don't want people to be depending on me. I don't want my, my little sibling to come and ask me, hey, can you help me with this? And I say, yeah, later. And later never comes. No, I want to be someone that my little sibling knows. Hey, it's later. I'm going to play with you now. I'm a person of integrity. So what do I do? I keep my word, especially to the Father. But y'all, if you can't keep your word to people that you do see, you're not going to keep your word to the father you don't see. You will be fake with him just like you're fake with others. And it's not worth it. God never lies. It's in our nature, in our character as new creation believers. What does it say? Look at it in Numbers 23, 19. 
God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. See, God in me, the presence of God in me does not lie. So I go against the spirit of God in me when I just say whatever and I don't follow through. I must be a person of integrity. And what can I expect? Last thing, Jephthah, what did he do? He vowed to the Lord and he followed through. Y'all, Jephthah, just because of that, he ended up in Hebrews. Y'all, there was a lot of really cool people all throughout the Old Testament that did really awesome things that did not make it in Hebrews. But see, God honors those who keep their word, who live by faith, who don't just say whatever and say, I'm going to do this, and, and then don't follow through. No, we're going to follow through. Whenever I say I'm going to do something, God, whenever I say every day I'm going to worship you, God, every day I'm going to worship you. God, whenever someone comes to me and asks me if I can help them out, and I say, yes, I'm going to help them out. Well, I got busy. No, you didn't. You're rebellious. You were selfish. If you said you were going to do something, then you do it. You move other stuff around. And what can I expect when that happens? Look what it says in Psalms 41, 11 through 12. By this I know that you are well pleased with me, because my enemy does not triumph over me. As for me, you uphold me in my integrity. Y'all, even when I don't feel like it, when I just create a habit of following through, doing what I know to do, doing what I say I'm going to do, it's like the Spirit of God literally stands up on the inside of me. He holds me up. He helps me complete what I've said I was going to do. What does it say? It says, you hold me up in my integrity and set me before your face forever. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty good, to be before his face, to see his glory to see the manifested presence of God every single day, all how? Just by simply, when I say something, I do it. By faith, keeping my word. I don't need to make promises. I don't need to say things that I cannot follow through. Just like Pastor Kathy always told me, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Well, if you can't do what you're saying you're going to do, shut your mouth. Don't say it. And if you really want to be that person, well, I really want to do that. Well, then tell them that. You know what? I'm not to the point right now where I'm strong enough, but I'm going to get there. And so I'm going to go home and I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to get in the word and I'm going to pray in the Holy Spirit so that I can get there and do what you're asking me to do because I want to be all that God has called me to be. But here's the thing. If I don't train myself now to keep my word, look to your neighbor and say, let's keep our words. Then I will never walk in the manifested presence of God that he's called me to. I want you to bow your head.